<clears throat> Hi everybody, this is Michael. This is Carolyn. And this is the Penguin Coffee Clutch. Hi. Hi. Um, my Ravelry name is Aptinonitz. And you're... I'm C-P-R-E-D-M-O-R. And it's also our Instagram names. Yes. Um, and our group is the Penguin Coffee Clatch slash Aptinonitz Designs. So if you just search Penguin Coffee Clatch, you should find it. Mm -hmm. So I um, was watching the, the podcast from all the, all the crafts. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the people I um, exchanged my uh, Christmas in July package with and so mm -hmm. they opened it on uh, on screen and I, I'm sorry if I got the name slightly wrong if you'll realize by now that my memory is not of the best mm -hmm. anyway I think it's all the crafts or all the crafters I think it's all the crafts mm -hmm. anyway they seem to have a very good time with it which right. is nice and oh, that's good. the funniest thing I had I have three darning needles that I use metal darning needles that I use to sew right. things in and I keep them in one of those Oh, crochet things where you keep expanding, spinning, so it does one of these foldy things. It becomes like a scrubby. Okay. Okay, so I keep my needles in that next to my chair, so they're not going to roll on the floor. I'm not going to step on them. Anyway, I had three. And for the past several weeks, I've only had two. And I uh. couldn't figure out what I had done with this needle of mine until they unpacked their gift. And they found it in one of the Christmas <laughs> balls. And I know what I had done. I was on the boat when I was working on one of them. Mm -hmm. And so rather than have this needle get lost somewhere on the boat, liable to stick you at any, you know, mm -hmm. inopportune moment, I stuck it in the Christmas ball thing. Oh, I'll remember to take that out. Mm. Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> so they got a really good darning needle. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's well, one of my favorite, you know, weaving in needles that I use. Well, that, that was nice of you. It was very kind of me. <laughs> <laughs> so now, I, now I'll have to go searching through my sewing to find it. I'm sure I can find another, but mm -hmm. it does answer the question that I wasn't crazy. It's not somewhere in the house. And yes. had it been put back where it was belonged, it wouldn't have gone on a long trip. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, use it in good health because it, it really is a great needle for, you know, sewing, uh, knitting together and stuff like that. I have a finished object. Oh. Yes. It is my nemesis I, shawl. I do not have a finished object. Well, this is huge. Yeah, that is huge. Yes. So there's this end. I'm sorry. I'm just going to hide Michael for a while. Yes. And then there's okay. this. And it comes to here. And then we have this side, and it's symmetrical. And I chose these colors because I do wear a lot of navy blue. And except on you know days like today, it's cotton. Mm. It's a Woolies creation cotton. Well, it cotton. was a six strand. Well, cotton's going to be pretty hot. Well, actually, I found depends. Mm. Um, it's, this is really good for uh, if you're running in and out of air conditioning mm -hmm. because it's really easy to kind of throw back and much more malleable, I think, than sweaters are. Mm -hmm. um, and cotton, I think, is kind of less hot than wool. It's a misnomer. Well, it may be, but I, mm -hmm. in my head it works that way. So mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, but I do like the color. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the fact that the way it's made the way the pattern is written, it lays right on your shoulders. So you can just have, wear it as a regular shawl or traditional shawl. Mm. Um, so anyway, I'm very pleased with it. I had started it, it was a mystery knit along from the um, criminal knitters, knitters that are the, for the serial okay. knitter in all of us. Okay. And um, it was their, their January 1st start. And I started it January 1st thinking, oh, they said it was only garter stitch. I can do that really fast. Yeah. It's July. Mm. Um, <laughs> not so fast. Mm. But I really, I really like it. It's a, that's the group I think I first joined when I started looking at Ravelry mm. with um, any kind of intention of being a lot more active. Because mm -hmm. uh, I had joined a couple years. I found out about Ravelry a couple years before I actively started doing much of anything. 
And I didn't know about the Harry Potter Club and all this right, other kind of right, stuff. Right. So I was just kind of looking around for a group of, of knitters that kind of did things together. And I had, I've had problems in the past making shawls, like mm -hmm. taking them to completion. Mm -hmm. I generally get to a certain point and go, I am so done with this. <laughs> I am just done. I do that with all of my knitting. And it, it's not big enough. Mm. You know, you really do have to get that next, you know, do that last six inches. Because if you're doing a round shawl, that last six inches is a foot. Mm. And it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, and I like the fact, I think what intrigues me, or intrigued me then, and still does, is that they'll tell you in general what the shawl is. Mm -hmm. So they'll tell it's a pie shawl. Mm -hmm. right, so you know it's going to be one ginormous round thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you can then choose the colors that you want and choose whether you want it in wool or whether you want it in cotton. Mm -hmm. um, this Woolies did not, was not a very, it didn't do a color change, the long color change that a, a lot of them do because mm -hmm. I didn't ask for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I also found a, um, an indie dyer, I think it's Apple Tree Farms, okay. uh, who has been at Vogue Knitting Live in New York. I know I've, I've met and talked with her there. Mm -hmm. uh, and she'll remember you. I ordered two things from her. She remembers you. In fact, she remembered not only me, but what I had ordered. And I couldn't remember what I ordered, so she's much better than I am. <laughs> um, and she will do these, these uh, wools in long color changes, much like the Woolies does. So mm. that's really good to know. And speaking of wool, I was, did I tell you that I saw that Rowan has changed ownership? No. It's now owned by some investment bankers. Oh, that's, which really that's interesting. Which really bode well for yeah. the, the huh. knitting community. So anyway, just a heads up that Rowan has changed ownership hands. And I noticed on webs for the past two weeks or so, they've been set, putting a lot of Rowan on discount. Um, and I have to admit that I made a large purchase yesterday. Um, well, hopefully the investment bakers will just decide to keep it the same. Well, I hope so too. But in the meantime, I ordered a lot of DK weight for mm. $5 a skein, mm. which I thought was a pretty good price. Mm. And... Um, with, with an eye, or, well, first of all, I have almost little or no DK weight, except what I bought from our producer. Um, mm. And so I, I thought it would be a, a good way to lay in some, some DK. And then secondarily, I thought vaguely again of doing that master's class. Did you get the email that they've changed the instructions? They've updated the instructions? I probably did, but I probably missed it somewhere in the Well, anyway, I, I have emails. it and I printed it off. I haven't looked at it, but I thought, so I put out on Ravelry in, um, in the HP club, uh, has anybody tried it? And does anybody, you know, what are their thoughts about it? stuff like that? Hmm. Because I figured maybe I can I'll, I can take some needles to work. <laughs> what am I kidding? I always take needles to work. <laughs> the only time I didn't take needles to work is today because I, I turned the wrong way, I think Monday night, and I tweaked my back. Hmm. So I'm not carrying a lot of extra things. But, what, 300, 300 out of 365 days out of the year, I'm carrying needles and yarn. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, maybe what I could do is I could leave the master class to work at work. <laughs> and have, you know, when I get home, I get to do the fun knitting. So I thought that that's, that's an idea. It kind of passed through my head since yeah. the yarn is being delivered to work. What the heck? Mm. Um, the other thing I did, it must have been, Rowan has been on sale for a little while, like this summer. So there must have been words about the ownership changing hands. Anyway, one of the things I wanted to talk about, what I intend to be doing in the near future like the next four months, that near future. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do a, a, a dressing gown. Okay. Okay. And I have a picture of it. In fact, right on top, what I bought from Webs was the Rowan Kid Classic, and it's called Cherry Red. It doesn't look very cherry there, but it yeah. is cherry red. <laughs> and it's a bright popping red. Mm -hmm. um, and I love red. I love all colors. I'm kidding myself when I say that there's a particular kind that I care about. I love all of them. And there's a dressing gown by Jenny Atkinson. Ah, 
There. Dressing gown by Jenny Atkinson, which I think is like glorious. It goes like almost down to her ankles in the back. Mm -hmm. And considering how hot it is now, it's about as cold as I think it's going to get in the winter. So I thought that might, would be a fun gift for myself. Since four months from now is November, it would be a perfect Christmas gift for myself. So yeah. I ordered um, 19 skeins of this Rowan Kid Classic, uh, which is what this thing will take. So I have in my future a dressing gown. Uh, and it has cables and all kinds of stuff. I, it looks really fascinating. Hmm. So uh, for those of you in the Harry Potter Club, that I, is what I'm going to propose as my next owl. Uh. So that's that. And then, um, so that that's a new project. In my lab, I've got a whole list of projects on the needle. They're not even all the projects on the That's what's so sad. Um, but these would be new projects that I wanted to work on. Remember? This is the yarn that I dyed, the, the other yarn that I dyed. Okay. The one that I, I said looked like beaches. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, what I decided, I think what I want to do is the sugar maple. Oh, yeah. And while the sugar maple has different color separation, and mine, my skeins actually go from a lot of yellow and a little blue, even Stephen, and then a little yellow and a lot of blue, mm. I figured... As the color changes, I could still have it going from light to dark mm. down the sweater. That's not really how yarn works. I know. It goes around like this. Mm. But if you wind it, the balls will be different color. Each ball mm. will be light, medium, and dark. I guess that's true. So it will... I, yeah. Worth a try. What the heck? I like yeah. it anyway. Yeah, that's so. true. That you, you could get some, some gradation tonal, there. Tonal shade. No, gradation. Still gradation. Still gradation. <laughs> God knows I need help. Thank, thank goodness you're here. Um, so anyway, that is the other new project that I intend to take on, I think, in September. Mm. Um, because what I didn't finish is the other shawl, the lace shawl, this thing. That lace shawl. That has not changed in its presentation oh, at all. It's it's still at that point, which is, I think, 900 yards. Mm. 900 yards. It's supposed to have like 3,000 yards. So I've got wow. another 2,000 yards to go. Yeah. Depending that's... on who, who you believe. Remember, this is the, the project that they said, no, it might only take 1,200. There's one person who did it with 1,300 yards, by the way. I don't know how that can be, and they had gauge. So anyway, I do intend, this will be my at-home project. Mm -hmm. When I'm at home, I'll be working on this for the mm -hmm. month of August, mm -hmm. or from now on, since I did finish that. It is not a travel project. Right. Nups and lace. Mm -hmm. Do not shout, take me in a car. <laughs> they, no, they, they, they do to me, but I'm weird. Uh, yes, well, you know. Not to me. Mm. Um, I, I think that it would be incredibly easy for me to lose a stitch right off these needles. And I've done twice that. Just one. You know, one stitch. And I've had to go quickly grab it and hunt for it. It's not an easy pattern to mm. resurrect from. Mm -hmm. So um, this is an at-home pattern. Mm -hmm. um, so I do, that will, be, that will be what I'm doing for there. Then I said, you know, one of the things about the nemesis is that, well, it's been sitting around my chair. I have a habit of, like, just keeping my projects around my chair. Why am I looking at Because they're all around my chair at home. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my chair because it's the one I bought with summer teaching money, and Richard's so mad that I bought it. And I went, well, then don't sit in it. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, so it's my chair, and I have my stuff all around it. And... I think it's time for some of these things to get a life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I started them because I like them, and, and they should be finished. So I have, enough, I obviously was mad for Rowan, like in the past six months or something. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to be making a shopping bag, the Sierra for shopping. It's a Sierra handbag. And I had bought um, natural 
straw and then black cotton. So the bottom would be black, which is good for it sitting on the floor and stuff like that, and then mm -hmm. natural and then white-ish. So mm -hmm. it would have a color change as it went up the bag. And um, I stopped it because the, I got gauge, but the pattern didn't actually make out as big a bag as I thought it would. And that was disappointing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to f just frog it and start again bigger. Mm -hmm. I want a bigger bag. If I'm going to take the time to do this, mm -hmm. I want a bigger bag. I want something that's almost twice as big. So if it's shorter, that's fine. Mm -hmm but bigger. You're right, twice as big. Maybe one and a half times as big around <laughs> because they, they didn't hold something. Yeah. Like books, you know, like stuff that I actually use. You know, yeah. Like, so I need something that will actually... Are, are, are you sure knitted fabric is the best for books? Um, this is actually linen. It's not going to really stretch a whole lot. Okay. Well, we'll see. Yeah. You know, and if I can't cart books around it. I'm sure there's lots of other stuff I can cart around in it. That is true. I, I can find lots of stuff to cart around. Mm. So anyway, this is linen. It's Rowan Creative Linen. And I think I do want it a bigger footprint on the bag mm. because if I'm using it to stuff, even if I'm using it to stuff things that are going on the boat, I want a bigger footprint so I can stuff Oh, cereal boxes and, you know, all this, the food stuff that go on the boat, which mm. is lighter than books. Mm -hmm. uh, I can use a bigger footprint. I don't need something tall because if you're shoving in loaves of bread or a loaf of bread, y you want more space this way than this way. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be frogged. But, again, this is only one of several things that I have planned or possible to finish. I know. I know. It's like I assume that time is going to expand like mm -hmm. it's bigger on the inside, but it's not. And I know that. Once, you know, it was, it was fantastic this morning as I'm, I did all this today because I was working on an article. <laughs> I've been fighting with words all day, mm -hmm. <laughs> the written word. And I'd write a paragraph and then I'd scratch it out and I keep three words and I would take those words and I'd rearrange them and I'd start off again. That reminds me of a commercial I saw on Ravelry. What? Uh, it's for this weird grammar checker thing, like this advanced grammar checker type of thing. It's like, I, I don't know, it's, 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 it's like uh, what you would find on uh, Word but uh, better. Yeah. Well, I feel like I've been fighting my way out of a wet paper bag all morning because <laughs> I, I actually have an outline, which is, you know, real progress for me. Okay. So I have an outline, so I know what I want to cover. Um, I've managed to, this is stemming from the uh, presentation that I gave in June out in Ohio uh, about using um, learning exercises in class, and I managed to uncover um, uh, a theory that I think would explain why this stuff works. So what I needed to do was preface the why does it work to actually show that it, that doing exercises and more active learning in the classroom works. Mm. Otherwise, why go into why it works if you can't show that it works? So I've been pulling research all morning that says, yes, it does work, and using the different active teaching methodologies mm. that it works. So anyway, but it just feels like a wet paper bag. You know, I'm getting there. I'm, you, know, I figure, you, you know, finding yourself out of wet paper bag doesn't sound that difficult. One wouldn't think so, <laughs> but it's sticky. Think about how hot and humid. It's just yucky. I guess. It's yucky yeah, is what it sure, is. Sure, sure. So I have this bag as one possible thing to work on. And then I've got something that I call Scrying the Blues. It, it's actually Iridaceae by Fatima Hines. Um, and it's knit from the top down. And what I have is I've got Dragonfly Fibers, Dragon Sock. And I got this at Rhinebeck. I got the wool in Rhinebeck almost two years ago. And they had put together, I guess, a kit it, it, with the yarn in gradation colors. So it starts up at the top very light and then goes darker as the sweater goes down. Mm -hmm. And I got it about a third done. 
but I can't go out and wear a third of a sweater. So I guess that's true. I believe me, it's true. <laughs> so, and this is really pretty. It's such a lovely blue. Uh, I mean, the blue is is gorgeous, and I think it needs a little love. So there's that. But wait, there's more. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's always more. Um, there's our project in Age of Asparagus. Yes. Uh, which is a gorgeous color. It's a gorgeous green. It reminds me so much of Ireland. Yeah. Um, and and the, it feels so good to work with. Um, but your cables are not easy. No. No. The, the, it's a chart to follow. So I figured that's another at-home project. It's not a car project. Mm -hmm. So now I have two at-home projects. One of which needs to be finished by September 25th. By I guess about 9 a.m. Um, the shawl. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, because I'm supposed to wear it to a wedding. So I figured that then this will be my next house project after the shawl. So I'm just letting you know it's not like right. gone from my mind. For Fend. Heaven for Fend. That would be terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Then I, ha I found as I'm going through, what was I doing? Oh, I was, well, the weaving, the weaving with the towels, mm -hmm. if you remember. Yes, I have another loom that isn't quite as portable as the knitter's loom. Okay. Okay. It's a tabletop jack loom with eight heddle, with, yeah, an eight heddle um, loom. Yeah. And I was... Oh, as usual, I'm looking for something and I'm just digging away. I mean, I, my head is down into the yarn and I'm just going like this trying to find things. And I found this bag. It's a shawl. <laughs> it's a shawl that's about half done. It's called um, Obsession. And it's another one of the mystery knit-alongs by the Criminal Knitters. Mm -hmm. And it is in a gorgeous, gorgeous skein of wool by um, Apple Tree, so she's done one of these long gradations for me, and it's just sitting there. Poor thing. Yeah. I think this could be a boat project. Okay. This is usually their patterns. I haven't looked at it in months, maybe eight, nine, ten months, mm -hmm. maybe worse. Let me see. Oh, worse than that. Started October first, twenty fourteen. Wow. Yeah, and it's just been sitting there. So, as I remember, usually they start you off and you just keep repeating a certain pattern for X number and then you change to something else. It's almost like that um, cowl mm -hmm. that uh, was done this term where you had three separate patterns. These are better than that, though, in that the patterns tend to flow into each other. Mm -hmm. Like the nemesis has actually three distinct parts, yeah. but it, it flows mm -hmm. into itself. So, Obsession, I think, is a boat project. So, this is very helpful. I so appreciate being able to discuss this with you because left to my own devices, I tried to do everything. <laughs> All right, and this, this, the yarn for this looks very similar to the Iridaceae, and I know that. I, I'm aware. I have a problem. I buy way too much yarn. <laughs> and I seem to have gotten on a blue kick. And this is worse. This is November 2013. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a very pretty blue that I had gotten down in um, Alexandria, Virginia at Fiberspace, a wonderful yarn store. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And I saw on their website, actually, and they send me mail because <laughs> I'm one of those people that, you know, buys way too much yarn for her own good. Um, and they now have um, three Irish girls yarn. Oh. Yeah. This could be trouble. Yeah. This could be big trouble. So for a long time, they didn't ship yarn. I was safe. <laughs> Now they'll ship yarn. No, uh, that's no good. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, God, save me from myself. So anyway, I think this will be after after the Iridaceae, and I think 
iridaceae in this than the shawl. Because these are, I honestly don't need 72 different shawls. I should finish the shawls I've got going on the needles and then be somewhat circumspect about starting any more. Because I'm still a klutz at arranging them and how to wear them. So unless it needs to be like a burka, um, <laughs> something where it's going to cover all of me, I'm not that clever. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I may put on hold any plans for future shawls. And the shawls that I have yarn for, what I'm thinking of is actually then repurposing that yarn, which hasn't been uh, caked. It, I mean, when I think about repurposing, it's all in my head. Mm -hmm. um, into other sweaters because I, I love dipping my hand into the sweater drawer and coming up with something that I've made. Mm -hmm. um, and the socks, the socks, they're great for sailing. <laughs> I'm out there with my sandals and wool socks when it gets cold in the evening and I'm great. Mm -hmm. So um, Ravelinux is starting. Uh, I don't plan on participating in that. I shouldn't have. Oh um, no. Oh yes, I have some. I have some sock yarn. Well, this is kind of. It didn't get done in the tour de sock. Mm -hmm. So this is yarn that I bought for tour de sock, and life overran me. I I did make one sock for tour de sock. That was not bad. No, I, and it was a very pretty pattern. I love the socks. So I figured this is one where the cabling that you do depends on the throw of the dice. Mm -hmm. it, that's just kind of whimsy enough that yeah. I think it'll keep me going. And again, it's cables. I can do that on the boat. Right. So that's a boat project and, and the Olympics start when we're on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, that's definitely a boat project, maybe the shawl, but I so saw I'll pick, take, take the uh, Ravelinic socks and I'll take um, Iridaceae, that sweater, and take it on the boat and hope to finish those while I'm on the boat. I'm not taking that shawl, the lace shawl. That, no. That, I, I would do something stupid and I'd be sad. This, when did I start this? It doesn't, oh, oh sometime in 2014 I started this. I have some art yarn. No, I think I must have gotten it at a discount, but I couldn't guarantee that. I'm, oh, I, I can be bad. <laughs> anyway, what I bought was I bought Art Yarns Ensemble Light. And it's an, a white off-white. Um, and it kind of, kind of just barely kisses the white and then goes into off-white. And so it's just really gentle variation in this white. Okay. Which... I thought would be interesting. Yeah, it sounds interesting. I think it'd be interesting. The pattern is not easy. This is a it's um, spring jacket knit along non beaded version by Iris Schreier, and I think she's the person that actually sells the art yarns. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a it's a again it's a lacy pattern. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a nice cardigan, non button cardigan, with you know lace lace all down the back. So there it is. Um, I'm thinking that's not a boat one. So I th after I finish the other two, I think this will be at the house. For I've already frogged it twice because I couldn't get the count right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a house version. Then this Maz from Germany had yarn. Or I had yarn. She had a pattern for mitts. I get really cold in the winter. I mean, I... Sometimes my hands are, like, one hand is actually colder than the other. I start wondering if I'm having a stroke or something. So far, so good. Not, no stroke. Um, but I, anyway, she has a mitts pattern. Um, it's, let's see, it's R-U-E-B-E-Z-A-H-L. Rubezal. I have no idea. Rubezal mitts. And they're so delicate. And there's, like, cables and, and lace. There's yarn overs again. Can you tell I have a fixation with lace? Um, so I think, again, I'm going to put these as, as house projects and then traveling projects. And I think that'll help. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're all going to get done in August by any means. But I have, a, I have as a goal 
to, to finish up some of these projects that are on the needle because I really did start them because I wanted to wear them. I like them. Right. I still like them. Right. You know, so they need to be done. <laughs> they need to be done because I've got all this other yarn that um, I want to make up too. And I really don't want to start something until I've helped some of these others like graduate. Yeah, I understand. So that's, let me check my pages. Yes, so that, that, this has been my planning stage, just to let you know, so that um, when I get home this evening after my meeting, um, it's going to be the lace shawl, mm -hmm. I promise, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and actually make some headway on this to get it done. Um, and then I was watching uh, the expat, expat uh, podcast. Yeah. Yes, by Mina. And she's working on a lace weight cardigan. And darn if I didn't say, gee, that looks really nice. I bet I could do that. Uh, yeah, Knitting Expat, that's who she is. Yes. And she's doing such a great job with it. It looks so attractive, even in its pieces state. And she knits so fast. I'm nowhere close. But I started looking through my stash going, I bet I could do that. I bet I have something. And sure enough, I came up with two different sets of, of yarn that I could make it in. Mm. I have a problem. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> You're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been working on? Oh, geez. A um, few things. Oh, cool. Uh, I, I forgot to bring the socks just because it was in a, the bag, the big bag of stuff in my mm. back hurt. So I didn't bring it, but I did finish my socks. Did you see I posted them? Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I did post them in, in my space. I don't think I posted them to finish. In the chat, I right. posted them. Right. I think that's where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I followed the directions correctly this time. <laughs> so I did finish the pair of socks that we were doing the knit along for here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to let everybody know I did do that. I didn't, didn't let you down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been working on my scarf. It's almost finished, I'd say. Um, oh, Michael. That is fantastic. This is the side we can show, right? Yes. Okay. There's a different color on the other side. Yes. And I get to really enjoy it. <laughs> um, so, oh, okay. So this has a lot of color differentiation in it. Mm-hmm. The one on the other side is not so much. I'm assuming that this is one skein. It was colored this way? Yes. Ah, okay. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, so is it's... Is this your design? Yes. So it, it should hopefully be finished soon. How much uh, longer do you want to go with it? Um, I'm going to finish this repeat and uh, then probably do the lace border. And call it a day. So. And how do you envision this? Do you think of it as a winter scarf to like put I, on your coat and then throw this around your neck and then wrap it around a couple times? Or? I, I don't think like that. That's 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 my downfall as a designer. Is I don't think along those lines. I think along the lines of, of the pattern. Yeah. Ooh, this looks pretty. This this would be cool. Uh, maybe I should do this if I thought more along the lines of. Um, Oh, what would what would a knitter like to wear and when? Then you know my designs would be vastly hold different. Your, hold your stitches on. I think it would be pretty as a belt. <laughs> it would be a lovely. I'm, I'm told it'd also make a nice tie. Yes, yes. But look, as you have designed it, mm -hmm. this could be a gorgeous belt on, on a very. All right, I'll sit down. I'm wearing navy blue, mm -hmm. but it, with navy blue or with black mm -hmm. or any Most number colors. of a solid color, yeah. this would be a gorgeous accessory. I guess so. I mean, I'm going to block it a little for width, so it would be a little wider a than little this. A little wider. All right. But if you didn't want to block it, I mean, if I were knitting it and I didn't want to block it, it would be a great belt. It's four inches, four and a half inches. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, and I've been looking, 
where was I where was I playing today? I think I was playing could be Nordstrom's, could be Neiman Marcus. Again, they sent me mail. Mm -hmm. And they've got a um a, a fashion uh focus on like nineteen forties, nineteen fifties. Wide waistbands for women. Yeah. And this this just fits right in. Yeah, and it it, it wouldn't need very much blocking to be a belt. That's no. that's that's the beauty of my uh, double knit lace technique is it's pretty naturally blocked uh, as is. It doesn't require much blocking to uh, to open it up. Oh, Michael, it's just gorgeous. It really is. I think you could list it as a scarf or a belt. <laughs> okay. I'll... Really, sincerely, because I think that might give knitters, um, again, a, a different way to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really pretty. Really very pretty. Well, I'm so glad you made progress on it. Yeah, so it's it's almost done, I'd say, um, and so that's that's one of the main things I've been working on. So then, um, do you have to write out the pattern? Yes. Okay. But it shouldn't be difficult to write out, honestly. I just uh, take one of my Vogue knitting designs and translate the techniques from that, and then draw out the chart and call it a day. It's it's. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's do this chart, then repeat this so many times for different sizes, and then do this chart and call it a day. Well, that's good. Yeah. Makes it easier for tech editing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, that's wonderful. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> this is very nice. Now, is this going to any particular destination? Is this in conjunction with somebody? or? Uh, this is in conjunction with the yarn company that uh, supplied me the yarn, hence why I'm not showing the other side. Um, but, uh, is it going to be a kit then? I have no idea ah, what you okay. want to do. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's staying with me. I don't, I don't know if I'll wear it, but, uh, you know. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Very nice. So that's that's one of the main things I've been working on. Mm -hmm. I've also been working on a secret project uh, with Melissa of right. the Spicy Homemaker. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're, we're starting to get into that. Uh, we've got yarn support, so nice. the yarn will be on its way soon enough. Um, in the meantime, we're planning things out. I, I'm doing a lace portion. I need to write it out. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, yeah. So I've been working on that. Um, uh, and let's see. I also have this thing that my wife has made me start working on. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. And this is... That's interesting. Double knit intarsia, I guess you would call it, or not intarsia, double knit uh, fair, fair isle. Fair isle. Yeah. Um, wow. Intarsia is a very different thing. Uh, so it only uses two colors per row, um, which, you know, makes it pretty easy to double knit. It's, mm -hmm. um, but this is going... My wife is doing this swap, this nerd girl swap. I've heard of it. Yes. Uh, your your daughter's doing it too. Yes, she is, and uh, has gone off the deep end. Yeah, which you know, I I don't particularly like that she's done that, but uh, I stay out of it. Yeah, I think I went off the deep end in this last swap, but I had two people. Mm. So I uh, and I, I tried to think about what their their podcast is about. Mm -hmm. Um, with what I put in the box. Mm -hmm. So I, I put everything in the box that was on the list to put in the box, and then I put in a few other things. Right. Um, so, I mean, going off the deep, I, I'm, I mean, I went, I stuck a toe over. Mm -hmm. That's all. I didn't make them bags. I didn't yeah. weave them fabric. Yeah. I, I didn't do what I could have launched myself <laughs> into. Right. Um, but... You know, if someone goes off the deep end, I just stand around with a life preserver to, you know, pull them out again afterwards. Uh, no, that's not my concern. My concern is there's at least one participant who's, like, never done a swap and is worried that, that uh, her swap isn't going to be good enough. And, you know, the, the going off the deep end. Well, 
we always have one person who goes off, at least one person who goes off the deep end. And yeah. I know myself, I was where, well, is this good enough? It's, it's that desire to mm. um, make mm. someone happy. Y yeah, you, want it, you want it to be good enough for them. Mm. Well, I, I was talking to Melissa about uh -huh. this swap and which one? Uh, this one. Nerd girl? No, no, the, the, the one we just we, did. Yeah, and uh, she was like, uh, even if I explicitly, or maybe it wasn't her that said this, but some, I think it was Andy from Andre Sunitz that said this. Um, uh, even if I explicitly ask them not to go off the deep end, there's still going to be people that go there off the deep be. end. There will be. You, know, you, just, um, you just have to get used to that. I felt, I mean, with the parameters that we were given, I mean, there was a Christmas ornament, mm -hmm. a Christmas decoration of some kind. Mm -hmm. I did that. Mm -hmm. um, a card. And it, I mean, it's good to have a list of things because I'm an idiot. And I easily could forget, like, a card or forget what normal people would think of as social niceties. Mm -hmm. And would, of course they would include, I'm just like, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm going to apologize in advance. If there's something that you think I've been incredibly rude, it's probably because it didn't hit my radar. It, sometimes I'm shocked yeah. at how blind I really am, and it's because I didn't catch the clue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to blame it on my eyesight. Okay. That if I didn't catch that, that clue, that thing that should have triggered something, I will be like, you know, the, the elephant in the china shop going blunder, blunder, blunder. So I will say... I'm, I'm glad you used elephant because bulls are actually very graceful in china shops. I think an elephant is just so big. Yeah, I don't think an elephant would do well. But or a gorilla. Would, I don't know about gorillas. I know bulls are very graceful. And, and so if you put a bull in a china shop, it's not going to break any china. It'll, it'll run, but it'll, it'll dodge a china very well. Right. Well, elephant. Yes, elephant's good. Elephant. I, I, uh, I like that metaphor. So, Melissa, I, I'm really happy that you gave us a list. And I just went a little bit over because the people I had, and I had two, um... I only had one named person, but there are two people on the podcast, and the other person didn't have a swapper, mm. swabby. She was, she, yeah. So I didn't want her to feel left out. Mm -hmm. And her partner, you know, sent me a note saying, you know, there's two of us, and I don't want you to feel compelled. What do you want to do? And I said, in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I hate for someone to be left out. Um, but I do forget things like cards. So, Melissa, yes. thank you very much for explicitly putting down card. Yes. That is really good. Yes. I need a checklist. So, and, and what is, I mean, I understand it's different colors. It's two colors per row. It reminds me something like mosaic knitting, mm -hmm. which is, I think, two colors per row. Um, yeah, mosaic knitting is two colors per row, but that's slip stitches. Um, yes. Fair Isle is two colors per row. But uh, carried. Yes. And that's basically what this is. And what are you doing with this? I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, a crazy quilt. It is like a crazy quilt, but it's actually a board game. Oh! So my, in yarn? Yes, in yarn. Is uh, this the penalty? <laughs> what? No, it, this is the board itself in a board game. Yes, this is the board. How big is it going to be? I don't know yet. Is this like part of playing the game? We have to all make a board? No. Oh. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I wasn't planning on releasing this pattern. Oh. This is... This is a, it goes in the game. It, it goes in the swap, yeah. Oh, this is part of the swap. Yes. I got it. So I thought you were going to distribute the pattern in the board game. Oh, no, no, no. This is not a board game I'm planning on, you know, selling. This is a board game my wife and I designed together because this person that she's swapping with she, she and her family are really into board games and cool. they have five people that play um and so my wife wants to make them a five person board, board game. game um and so that's what this is how many so you have five different colors no it's four different colors um but the the i'll show it it's really better. um and the board game itself is basically I don't yarn crawl the board game. Um, Sounds like fun to me. 
So it's it's a very it's a very simple board game with very simple rules. Um, you you have your pieces and you you have some yarn and you have uh, you have money. Uh, That's good. <laughs> And Any yarn crawl I've been to, I needed money. <laughs> y yes, and so every tile represents something. One tile represents free yarn. One tile represents a yarn store where you can buy yarn. One tile represents uh, getting paid. And one tile represents life expenses, college <laughs> tuition, mm -hmm. thing, things like that that you have to put money Car into. Car insurance. And, yeah. Yeah. And if you land on one of those tiles and you don't have enough money, you're going to have to sell your yarn, which you're not going to get as much of an investment in. No. Um, you never get back what you paid. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. And you can also try to bargain with others to, to, to give you money. Um, and otherwise, that's it. The goal of the game is to get the most slash best yarn at the end and you, you I win <laughs> in and, real and, life i think i win and you go down the tile like this go down over up over down over up over down cool. over up and that's that's very it. nice so that's how, how many squares do you have to have or rectangles uh, oh and there's a six-sided die that you use to move um oh cool and right now i have that's what most dies are aren't they six-sided uh, that's the most common die. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, if you're talking about dice and different kinds of dice, uh, the most commons are uh, four-sided, six-sided, eight-sided, ten-sided, twelve-sided, and twenty-sided. I'm catching a theme here. They're all even numbers. There, there are the way to do a th three-sided die. Um, is to take a six-sided die and divide it by two, basically. So one to two is one, two to th or three to four is two, and five to six is three. That's how you do a three-sided die. A two-sided die is just a coin. Um, you can do some, let's see, what else? I have a seven-sided die for yeah, my socks. Yeah, there are seven-sided dice and 24-sided dice, nine-sided dice too, but those are not common. They're, they're basically custom-made and very rarely used for anything. I have a bag of, of dice, I think, going from a three-sided dice up to a 20-sided dice. Mm -hmm. um, because in the Tour de Sock, they said you needed to have a seven-sided die. And so um, Elizabeth brought, uh, my daughter bought me a, from Amazon a bag of dice that yeah. just covers the whole thing. Yeah, it's I, fascinating. Yeah, I, I have some 24-sided dice. Um, <laughs> and I've seen 14s and 15s, but mm -hmm. I, I like the 24s because 24 is my favorite number. Um, cool. Because it's you can divide it by 12, 8, 4. Four, two, six. three, and six, and that's until you get to really high numbers. That's the that's the number that's divisible by the most things. Cool. So, you know, I, I really like that about twenty-four plus. There's twenty-four hours in a day, but I don't care about that. Um, no, it's the what you can do with the twenty-four. And there's a show called Twenty-Four, but I don't care about. Well, I mean, that's a good show, but. <laughs> that, that's, that's, so, that's, how many more squares do you? Well, right now I right. have One, two, three. Eight, 18, I believe. Yes. Uh, I, need a, I, I need at least twice that much, probably three times that much, maybe four times that much. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. And it's, how long did this take you? Uh, a couple days. So when is the swap done? I've been hearing about the swap for ages, it feels um, like. Like a week and a half, so I have to really get started on this thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> if you get to have dinner, I think you better get started on well, din that. Dinner's no problem. I cook my you own. you cook dinner, yeah. yeah. Well, that's really nice. So what you have, so the colors are green, gray. yellow, gray, and brown. Mm -hmm. Uh, green, orange, oh. purple, and gray. Gray. I'm also colorblind, obviously, too. I'm colorblind, but only to like reds and yellows. Hmm. So. Well, that'll keep you busy. Yeah. Have you been dyeing anything else? 
I haven't dyed anything since we last spoke. It's so hot. I can't even yeah. think about dying something. Yeah, and I, I've, I've been running into trouble with reskaining, and so that, that hasn't been going well. Um, What's the problem with reskaining? Uh, it's, it's hard to keep the skeins in skein form to begin with, so when I reskein, they're often a tangled mess that I have to you know what Karina through? told me? What's or that? Is, is that you put a lot of strings around, tied strings. Yeah, that's that's like what six. that's what I'm thinking. That doesn't help me this time. No, I, no, but you know it's a yeah. learning process. But, but in, I believe she has six strings. And does she around. just does she just tie them like loosely? Loose, loose, like like um, big circles around. Big, big circles. Okay. Yeah, so that it it's going to keep them from being out of their lane. Mm -hmm but not so much that you can't put your fingers in and whoosh things around, of course, in gloves, um, you know, to do things in the water if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So it, it's big circles around the skein the, of yarn. Okay, um, I'm, 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 I was, that's what I was thinking. I'm going to try well, that the next time, and hopefully it'll work a lot better. And it also helped in getting the um, skeins out of the tub of water. Mm. Um, not the tub, the pot, mm -hmm. because you could you just grab the loops. Grab them. Yeah. That, make, that makes sense. Um, and the tongs, it's, they were, you had more chances for finding a string mm -hmm. the more strings you had. Mm -hmm. And she, I believe it was six that we had on each skein. Okay. I, I, will, I will try that. And maybe. then I went, I mean, in my head, since I've not done this, mm -hmm. you know, is that you'd have two swifts. Put um, the old skein on one and a, and I don't, the, I don't and really, wind it on the other. Right, I don't really need two swifts. It, it, it doesn't. If the skein is fine, it doesn't take long to wind it into a ball and then wind it back onto the swifts. Okay, so and then I, mean, I think the the extra strings will help. Yeah, I mean, so th that's that's not a problem. Okay, um, good. So yeah, I will I will keep that in mind. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to start dying soon, as soon as the weather, weather gets breaks. a little better. For those of you who are not in the New York City area. Oh, no, no, this is even, it's even worse in the Midwest. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone. It's worse in the Midwest? It, it was 97, 98 on Saturday here. Yeah, but the Midwest is being 100, 110, oh, somewhere God. in there. It's, it, it's, it's hot everywhere. Oh, so for you. For those of you in England, yeah, there and you go. Scotland, yes, and, and then some up, of these places up north. where you're getting the heat, but you're not getting this kind of heat. Yeah, this is like Portugal heat. <laughs> uh, it's we we once I had a conference in Portugal in Porto, Portugal, but we landed in Lisbon, and we'd never been to Lisbon before, mm. and you know there was centigrade, and I don't do math conversion really well. Uh, one thing I know. What, I have one, I know that 25 degrees centigrade is That's a very pretty, comfortable temperature for yeah, me. Yeah. It's 75 or 76. So yeah, and I work. 37 is 98.6. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I work around this. 100 is, is 212. Uh, well, that, yeah, I work off 25. So mm. we, we landed and it was 40. Oh, so is it, that, was, that was definitely in the hundreds. It was 104, but yeah. it was good that I didn't know mm -hmm. how hot it was. Mm -hmm. um, because we thought, well, maybe Portugal is always this hot. <laughs> but never having been there, it's like maybe this is what summer is. We went south. Portugal, in our minds, was a sunny country, and therefore it, it should be hot. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize it was abnormally hot until the taxi drivers were commenting on how hot it was. Um, we're having that kind of heat around here. Yeah. Um, it was hotter out on Long Island on Saturday than it was in the city. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, Manhattan's pretty cool as it far was as on Saturday. Temp temperature goes. I don't know what it is about Manhattan. That maybe all the big buildings block out the sunlight or something. Well, it depends on where you are in Manhattan. If yeah. you're down by the battery, you're getting a lot of you know wind currents off the, off the water. Yeah, there's, there's also a lot of wind in Manhattan. Yes. So that, that helps, too. Yes. And so I, was, I've never found Manhattan to be a, a problem. Queens is pretty hot. And Queens was hot. Long yeah. Island was hot. Uh, we were Saturday night, we were in Stanford, Connecticut. Oh, my own. It was just, it was windy. Mm. But it was a hot wind. Mm, those are always fun. A, <laughs> there must be a word for those winds. 
I, I called it a fern, but that's like from Nordic countries, and that would have been cool. Mm. <laughs> uh, maybe a mistral. Uh, there's, there's, I'm sure that there's a wind somewhere in the world that is like this, and it just, just kept blowing, and it was a dry wind. So you, uh, I was drinking water hand over fist. You know, it's just mm -hmm. nothing about. We, we get one of those two and a half gallon jugs. Mm -hmm. We get a cup. We bring a couple of those on board, um, because what we have water in the system, but you don't want to drink that water necessarily because. It, it superheats in the boat. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. And, you know, I, I cook with it. I, I mean, I clean with it, in, you know, with the soap and the water. I, but cooking, I use it out of the two and a half gallon thing. Mm -hmm. So, and we have like maybe two bottles each, regular hand bottles. Mm -hmm. And we just keep filling them and rotating them into the cooler mm -hmm. that way. Um, we were refilling bottles like crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really hot, folks. And for those of you in the Midwest, oh, believe me, you have my sympathy, my empathy. It's bad. It really <laughs> is bad. Um, and yet, I've been reading some places like China is having f a flood situation. Oh, jeez. So it's, it's obviously, dis our weather is disparately proportioned um, and, and not well laid out. Yeah, um, it's it's not going well. No, it's it's hot. It, mm. It's some summers are cool. This is not one of them. I'm not sure we'll be having that many more cool summers for a while. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yes, <laughs> you're right. You are. I think you are absolutely right. What else do you have over there? Anything? Yeah, uh, I've been working on knitting the board game. Yes. Um, I and I've are swelling in the heat too. I've made several revisions. So the markers, are they like stitch markers? Yeah, these are stitch markers, and they're used in the game as, uh, well, basically, once you have the pattern and the yarn all separated, you need to knit on it. In order to knit on it, you, you, have, to put, you have to put time into it, and these stitch markers represent time. Oh, okay. So. Yes, every project takes time. Yes, and so I, I, I have a bunch of patterns, um, they're, they're on uh, little uh, cards, uh, the playing cards. Well, no, they, these are um, function cards. They're like in the game of life. You've got well, they're no, chess well, no, they, they are they are playing cards, but they 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 come from um, oh, I can't remember the name for those cards. The, the index cards. They come from index cards. Yes. Okay. So yes, they're they're Michael made playing cards. So the playing card, the, the deck of cards that go with the game. Yes. So yeah. so you separate it into pattern cards and all other cards, which include yarn cards, attack cards, and enabler cards. Do you have names of, of yarn dyers in those cards, like go I to don't. neighborhood fiber? I don't have names of yarn dyers in those cards. That, that, Andre Sue knits yarn. That's, 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 that's not that's not that bad of an idea now that I think about it. I, I might. I might, I might do that. So. I think that would be fun. Just support some indie dyers that way. Yeah. Um, okay, but, guys, so if you want your name in the pack, send Michael a note in the <laughs> rap group. Oh, I doubt they'll see this, but uh, yeah, yes, that's true. Um, so, like, here's a sample pattern. It's vanilla socks, and it's, it's backwards. You can't really read it, but it's pattern, vanilla socks, yarn, one white yarn, time is three, and then points is six. So that's that's like a sample thing. And once mm -hmm. you once you have the yarn and the time and the pattern, you completed it, you get points. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's a yarn card. This is white yarn. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, backwards, and then there's an attack card like um, like a work call. So you can't play time cards while well, that's in effect. An enabler call or an enabler card like um, inspiration, which lets you discard an attack card, or ravelry, which lets you draw two pattern cards, keep <laughs> one, and discard the other. <laughs> Because you're only allowed to draw one pattern card at a time, and if you discard a pattern card, that's all you can do that round. If you play a pattern card, the only other thing you can do that round is play the yarn for it. Um, that, that's, that's really... This sounds really fun. It, it, I, I actually alpha tested it on Monday. Uh-huh. Um, went, to, went to Monday Knitting Night. Right. 
Um, and uh, Mary and Joanne played it with me. Oh, great. Um, and so... Did they have fun? Yeah, they had fun. I, I had fun. Um, it's, it's exactly what I hoped it would be several revisions later. Um, I had to tweak the times and add in a couple other rule things, but uh, now that that's done, hopefully the next alpha test will go much more smoothly. Um, and, uh, and Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't be there. We had visitors from Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And I needed to be there. So. Yeah, and and finally, um, I got my swap from the from the Christmas in July swap. Oh and, my goodness! How and, much fun is that? Yeah, and and I I dipped a toe over in my own swap just like you because I in addition to a little uh, reversible cabled ornament, um, I also did a handmade bag, like like about this size. So this this. Uh -huh. This is the swap, and she sent me this this cool bag. It's very uh, cool. Yeah, it has it's, it kind of looks like um, the um, a library thing yes. where you borrow, and has the yes. author title, due date, borrower's name. I remember names, those. And it has you know these lines, date due, borrower's name, and and it comes with this little card that oh, also how has that kind of looks like a, uh, a little was, library card. Mm -hmm. Um, the checkout card. Yeah, and it's it's uh, the bags called or the bags from the company Out of Print, um, which which makes um, bags that uh, feel like book or book things. Mm -hmm. It's a book inspired bag company. Neat. And so that's pretty cool. And inside we have some tea. Um, Ooh. And we, we have this, this nice little oh, that's card. Um, and we have a couple of... Mm, Ooh, this looks good. White mm. tea, blueberry, and elderflower. Yeah. Sounds very good. And we have a couple of really cool uh, mini skeins. Cool. Um, this one's Diabolical is the yarn company, and it's Eye of Newt. <laughs> and this one is... Tans Fiber Arts, Fo uh, Fostan, I don't, can you read that? Tans Fiber Art, Tartan. Tartan. Tartan, Tartan I think. Tans Fiber Art, Tartan. Okay. So, so that's, that's what that is. And finally, I got this little bluebird of happiness. <laughs> which, oh, lovely. Which I really like because I love birds. Yes. Uh, so this will this will perfect. be a nice Christmas ornament. Very very cute. Um, so I, I'm in, very pretty. Yeah. So it's it was a good swap. I'm glad I participated. Very in it. nice. Um, so yeah, that's that's all the things I have really. Um, other than that, I I did my first um, podcasters um, online meetup thing. Right, you had been talking about that. Yeah, that that was great. Uh, a lot of people showed up, and they were they all enjoyed themselves, and so I'm gonna get. So is this in what Hangouts or? Yeah, Google Hangouts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm gonna get to do it again. I just Good. Have to uh, email. Organize. Yeah, organize it. So that's I'm I'm looking forward to that, um, and so yeah. That's, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Now we can just get you untangling your yarn. Yeah. Um, we'll be ahead of the game. Yeah, that's true. And I, 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 like you, I have a bunch of things I need to work on. It's it's, it's starting to get crazy. I'm, I, I have uh, two pairs of socks I need to be done. I need to finish my scarf. I need to finish this board game, and I and there's this sweater design I really want to do, um, so I, I need to do that as well. I found by printing out these pages, it helped clarify. Well, I, I have I have a little book that I write things in. Okay. So that's how, right. that's how I keep track, or I or I put them in Wonderlist. I use Wonderlist a lot. Wonderlist is very helpful. Yeah, so I often put my 
to do projects in Wonderlist? Well, you know, once you finish the, the belt scarf, <laughs> <laughs> um, that'll help, you know, open up a bit of time to yeah. finish the board game. I mean, yeah. if you could finish the belt scarf. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the board game first. Oh, okay. Then, so then, the then, then I'm going to finish the belt scarf. Then I'm going to write out some of these patterns that I've been meaning to write out. And, and I'm going to, at the same time, work on the Melissa pattern and um, and, and and do this sweater pattern. Yeah, did we want to talk about what we wanted to start in August, or are we going to wait on that? Uh, I think we should wait. Okay, uh, we're going to wait. We have a secret, but we'll tell you later. Keep okay. it under your hat. Yes. So. Okay. <laughs> so I, I think that's all I have to say. What about you? Um, I've been thinking about our secret, oh, um, okay. and I thought of what I wanted to do, and I may have to, what I, I was going to do it in yarn that I had dyed, so I may have to dye another skein of yarn mm. to be able to do what I want to do, or I bet I can go stash diving and actually find what I need, but, um, so I've been thinking about that, and the, and that, but see, we'll let you know. In a couple of weeks, I'll let you know. Yes. I'm not going any further because I'll blurb it all out. Yeah. And, yeah, that would be bad. Okay. Okay. So, well, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, as usual, watch out for any penguins or cats or anything else that Parakeets. Ha yeah, happens to be lying Birds around. Birds of happiness. Uh, all right, bye. Well, thank you for coming. Bye. Yeah, bye.